This morning I tweeted something very interesting about clothing. That clothing is not just what you wear, but clothe yourself in a more beautiful way with your character, your conduct. And for a mu'min, clothe yourselves with piety. Taqwa, closeness to Allah. Allah says this in the Quran, the clothing of piety is the best. And this has deep meaning in it, not just the physical clothing. Let me tell you something. If I'm a person who has tatty clothing, but I am, I've got so much positivity beaming from me, and I'm a spiritual person, religious person with a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my clothing becomes irrelevant. Irrelevant. And if I'm the smartest guy on the face of the earth in terms of my dress, but I'm a crook, no one wants to talk to me. I have a bad mouth. Nobody would want to talk to me. Anyone, I just look at them. You know, that look, that look. No, you need to humble yourself. No matter who you are, ask yourself, have you touched this life in a beautiful way so that when you get to the life after, it will come as a deed. It will come as a deed. May Allah grant us goodness. I just recalled something. Yesterday I went to hunt for my phone. I told you that at the beginning of my talk. There was a lady who helped me. And believe me, she was quite stern at the beginning. And when we were finished with my phone, subhanAllah, she actually smiled. Thank you very much. Okay, I said, oh, have a lovely day. And I walked away. And she just looked at me and smiled. She must be thinking, wow, I had such a different picture of guys who look like this. And look at this man. He's speaking to me. He's wishing me a good day. Wow. And I didn't just say, have a good day, and walked away. That's hypocritical. Have a lovely day, ma'am, and walk away. Subhanallah. And then I thought to myself, I'll get the smart Muslim telling me, but you're a Muslim, you're not supposed to have done that. Do you know Islam? That you're coming to tell me that you're not supposed to do that? You're living in a non-Muslim country. And this is something many people don't understand. You have an environment of people who really, really have a totally bad picture of you. They don't even know. And you're busy trying to apply things in your life that you yourself go against when it's suitable for you. I remember a man who told me, you're not allowed to speak to a woman at all. And one day I was on a flight and he was busy chatting the hostess. And I'm thinking, oh, is that not a woman? Wow. You know, I didn't know that transgenders also did that. May Allah protect us. Really. It's something strange that you know what? When it suits you, you'll talk about the dunya. Well, what about me when I want to promote my deen? Can I not talk about that when it's much more important? I remember a man, a, quite a religious man. And he came to me. He said, you know, you, you, you promote mixed gatherings. And I said, no, I don't. And he says, okay, I might have been somewhere where there might have been something, but it doesn't mean I promoted it because I visit airports and train stations and so many different places. And I, I happen to sometimes sit next to people of the opposite sex. I got nothing, no say over that, right? So this man tells me, no, very bad, haram. You know, you're a sheikh, we don't want to listen to you. I said, look, nobody said you need to listen or not to listen because there are hundreds of thousands of others that you could benefit from. Paradise doesn't come through my path, remember this. I always say this. There is not just one sheikh on the globe. There are hundreds of thousands. But the problem is if we keep on saying, this one's bad, that one's bad, this one's bad. Take the goodness and leave whatever you consider an error. Leave it out. But مَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا وَيُؤْخَذُ مِنْ كَلَامِهِ وَيُرَدْ Imam Malik ibn Anas says, every single one, you take some of what they say and you have to discount some of what they say because of their human nature. Besides Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the only one, you take absolutely everything. Imagine, Imam Malik ibn Anas rahmatullahi alayhi said this. So, me and you are actually people who are far down the ladder. You will have to discount some of what I've said perhaps. You may not like it. It doesn't mean that you will not benefit from me or I will not benefit from you. You will benefit from everyone where and how you can benefit according to that level. So much so that I've benefited so much from people who are Jewish in fields that are not religious sometimes. I've had teachers who've been Muslims, non-Muslims, and all sorts of other faiths who taught me mathematics and biology and geography and so on. I benefited so much from them. I took whatever I could in terms of the goodness. But the day they spoke about something that I felt this is now stepping territory that I shouldn't be taking from, I didn't take it. But I didn't swear them in return. I took. So if that's the case with the non-Muslim, what about the Muslims? Amazing. You have so many people every little while you see a clip saying, be careful of this man, be careful of that man. Be careful of the whole world because you have to be careful. Subhanallah. You have to be careful. I am careful and so should you. But if I've said something that helps you, thank Allah, perhaps pray for me. It doesn't make me a prophet. 
Nor does it make me a person who's, wow, I now need to worship this man because of so and so. No, I am a human just like you with the same struggles. Perhaps even struggling in a bigger way. Who knows? But we just look at things from a different perspective with the light of revelation. And that makes us content. That's what it is. Makes us happy. May Allah bless us. So, like I was saying, subhanAllah, people look at you and they tell you all sorts of weird things. You know, you are like this and you relax, take it easy. These are rules that govern us and we know the reason is we need to pass this beautiful test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I was telling you that there was this man who was really telling me I'm not going to do this and that because, you know, the way you do this and do that. And subhanAllah, I told him, I said, you know what? You have a business. The last time I walked into your business, I saw you and I'm saying it not out of hatred or anything. I just want to raise a point. The last time I walked into your business, I saw you sitting and chatting with a woman behind the counter. You know what? The counter is there. Behind the counter, there was a woman who I didn't see exactly how she was dressed. But it was definitely dress code that was Islamically, you know, not in the picture. And uh, you were busy chatting and having tea and so on. And I walked in and I greeted you. He says, yes, I remember that day. I remember that day. And he gave me the name of the person. I said, wow, there you are. You even know the name. So why were you chatting? He says, that's darura. That's darura. I said, what do you mean darura? He said, you are the guys who teach us that necessity will make prohibited permissible within the necessity. I said, oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. So he says, it was darura. I said, what type of darura was that? He says, no, 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 no. I have to survive. I have to earn. I have to, I have to put a plate of food in, you know, for my family at the end of the day. So I had to talk to her. Because she was my big supplier. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm neither saying you are right, nor am I saying you are wrong. Because that's your decision, your darura. You said it was a darura. You said it was a necessity. I am telling you, your necessity was related to your dunya, which means your livelihood and your life. My necessity was related to my deen. And I think that is much more important than what you found necessity in. So if you find me being kind to someone, do not come and tell me darura, darura in your style and in your time and because of you and not look at my own darura, which is perhaps of a far higher level. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. And I walked away. And sorry, I didn't really yell at him the way I was yelling at you right now. But I was just raising a point. My brothers and sisters, the beautiful deen of Islam.